Hello, snowboarders of the internet. I'm your host, Averin Lefebvre, and this is Top Fives, the only weekly top five show in snowboarding, I think. I don't know anymore. Who knows what's going on out in this world? Anyways, this week's top five, the top five best bang for the buck boards. That's right, stuff at a better price point that still offer a good performance basis out of this. With inflation, the prices have kind of jumped on this stuff, but you can still get any of these boards for under 500 US dollars. Number five, the Capita Outer Space Living, as seen right over here. This board is basically the little brother to the Mercury and the Mega Merc. This is basically my first all mountain freestyle board. You're gonna be able to get solid pop, snap off anything with it. It's easy to press and butter around with, and the side cut doesn't suck. It's got a smooth and fluid transmission. You can rail a carve when you absolutely need to. Like I said, it's basically your first all mountain freestyle board and you can take it from a low level intermediate and progress up on it and not have to worry about it holding you back. Number four, the Solomon Sight. This board basically got a huge overhaul this year and they redesigned it from the ground up. It carves better, it's got a little more power, it's just a better balanced board. You're gonna be able to pop off a roller or a jump with ease. You're gonna be able to initiate a turn without much fight and it's still butterable where it counts. I got on it and was like, wow, they really did overhaul this board. They made it so much better than what it was. And I think that makes it a lot more versatile. Plus at the price point that it's coming in, it's a solid bang for the buck. Number three, the K2 Ray Gun Pop, the cambered version of the Ray Gun. Now I love the regular Ray Gun. It's a solid board for people that are intermediates that are advancing, but I think too many of you are skidding your turns and not knowing how to drive camber. So that's why I'm recommending the ray gun pop over the regular ray gun. You need to learn that load when you're going through a turn and this board will give it to you. It's got a solid side cut. It's got power where it counts and it's just a very well balanced deck. Number two, the Rome Warden. I actually own this board. It's basically the little brother to the Freaker. I love the fact that it's a directional twin. So it makes it a little bit more all mountain versatile. Those rods do give you added pop when you load up that cam rocker profile. So you get this added spring out of it. The board's gonna boost. The side cut is easy to engage and you can lay a trench when you want to within reason. I mean, it does have some limitations to it, but overall, it's just a very well-balanced board for someone that's a progressing intermediate. They can do anything with it. And as someone that's ridden 25 years to know that I owned one and just thought it was an absolute blast, that should speak volumes about it. Honorable mentions, all great options, but just barely didn't make it on this list. The Yes Basic, it's your basic middle of the road snowboard. Cam rocker profile, Good side cut that's gonna grip. It can kind of do a little bit of everything and it's not gonna hold you back. The Ride Agenda. I've wanted to get on this board for a while and when I finally did, I was like, wow, this is like all the trickle down tech in Ride put into a price point package that doesn't suck. You got solid carbon array in there that's gonna give snap. The side cut grips and rips. It just feels like a more expensive board than it already is. The GNU Money, because well, some people do need reverse camber and this board actually doesn't suck for having reverse camber. You got magna traction on it, so it's gonna grip on firmer snow and it's soft and playful. It's one of those boards, you'll progress to a point and then you'll realize you need something with camber, but it will help you get to that point. And if you're one of those people that just really struggles with picking up the basics of snowboarding and you just want something that's gonna make it a little bit easier for you, this is what you should be looking at. Like I said, all great options, but just barely didn't crack the top five of this list. And the number one best bang for the buck board under $500 is the Amplit Ticket. Not the Amplit Ticket Twin, I didn't get a chance to ride that, although I'm pretty sure after riding this that that would just be a more freestyle focused version of this board. It is the stiffest board on this list. It's also the most damp, but for where it sits in the price point with this being the most expensive out of these five boards, it is solid. This board, cuts through crust and shunder with ease. It's stable and smooth at speeds. It's got solid pop. It takes a little bit more effort. That side cut is so dialed, you can lay carves all over the mountain. This thing completely blew my mind when I got on it because I was like, 
yeah, this should be okay. It's not really going to be as good as other amplets. And I was like, oh my God, for the price, this thing is absolutely phenomenal. I just sat there on the chairlift thinking to myself, I was like, man, I got to tell the people like this is a really, really good board. If you're a solid intermediate, even if you're a low level intermediate, or, you know, you're a little bit more of an expert rider, but you're on a budget, this is really, really a phenomenal board. I can't hype it enough. This has been my top five best bang for the buck boards for 2023. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Do you own one? Are you gonna buy one? Leave me a comment down below. Let's have a conversation about this list. If you're new here, remember to subscribe, click the bell, get those notifications. That way you're not missing any of the videos we got coming out for all you snowboarders of the internet. And if you really like what we're doing over here and you wanna support us further, swing on over to Angry Snowboarder VIP and become a member. Sure, I could tell you more here, but I got a video over there that explains it so much better. As always, I've been your host, David Lefebvre, and I'll see you in another video.